Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. This has been a long time coming. I've had this ship for absolute ages, and I, I really just didn't get around to playing her much. <laughs> because there are just too many ships. <laughs> At some point, uh, you know, some of them always almost make it into a review, review but then... Uh, I've got something else or something new comes up that uh, is probably more interesting or uh, you know I've, I've had already featured battleships a lot that week so I figured no now is the time now or never let's look at the Roma the tier 8 Italian premium battleship now tier 8 battleships um, there's a fair few and good of them uh, actually except probably for the North Carolina but as you've seen even that thing I'm getting along with now um, they, they are pretty good so it's, it's a difficult tier to be in let's see what the Roma is all about now the actual Roma was a Littorio class battleship the Littorios were okay it all started with the Germans making the Deutschland class, uh, like the uh, Graf Spee, those things, which frightened the French into building the Dunkerque, which then in turn frightened the Italians into building the Roma. Well, well not the Roma, but the Littorio class. And um, then the French came up with the Richelieu. And, it, it, you know, it's, it all just kind of, oh, no, <laughs> my neighbor has a bigger ship than I do. Uh, these things were the, meant to be the backbone of the Italian Navy. The Roma is actually what, kind of the second batch, sort of, and uh, was built relatively late in the war. And uh, she didn't actually get to fight very much because the Italians were out of fuel at the time. And she was meant to counter, obviously, the French and the British in the Mediterranean. As such, well, she was mostly on AA defense duty, and uh, the one time she actually went out, uh, after the uh, Italians had surrendered, uh, the Germans were very unhappy about that, because, well, she was supposed to be heading out and probably handed over to the Allies, so the Germans uh, dropped bombs on these things. And not just any bombs, they dropped guided glide bombs on them. So, um, yeah, kind of guided ammunition with the radio control and everything right so you you think world war ii was all pretty was all very much very backwards still there was a lot of stuff and lots of technology that that they had around at the time already that i wasn't even aware of so the fritz x guided bomb uh was which is dropped from a from a bomber and then there's the, the bombardier sits there and has a little joystick and actually sends radio signals to the bomb and can steer it to a degree it's not like a cruise missile or anything but um he has some influence as to where that thing hits so she got hit twice i think and the second hit uh caught her caught her on uh, the her second forward turret uh exploded the magazine and the whole thing just went up and took down a lot of the, her sailors with her now, the Roma was an interesting design, such that uh, she was pretty decently armored, but not in all places. So the Italians had a very interesting torpedo defense system that they came up with, which involved huge tubes, empty spaces at the side, but it didn't work quite as well as they, as they thought it would have been. Uh, they also apparently didn't really armor the burbets of the turrets, and I don't know if that's where has anything to do with the thing being being hit in the magazines by that. But um, there was some 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 quite interesting trade-offs being made in the design. But all in all, uh, we haven't really seen her in action in in real life, obviously. But a, a very impressive ship. So, Roma, what do we have in game? We have actually a decently armored ship so for tier 8 this is really not bad uh, especially the 30 percent torpedo damage reduction is quite significant so as as she, it's not a germ it's not german battleship level of, of protection but she is relatively decently armored uh, not quite as squishy as the french or um or others at this tier she is quite maneuverable uh, probably her main competitor would be the Richelieu, both in real life and, and in game, if you're talking about tier 8 premiums, because the Turpus is a very different beast altogether. So these two are usually the big questions, which one shall I get? 
uh, she's very decently maneuverable for a battleship and she has 381 millimeter main guns uh, with, a, with a pretty standard layout and um, of uh, two triple turrets forward and one aft now the italians initially wanted i think four or six millimeters but they didn't have the guns. They didn't even have plans or schematics for these things. So they ended up using guns that they already had. But in return, um, these are 50 caliber long, uh, length guns, which fire a relatively lightweight sh shell, but they're pretty long and uh, they have a rather high muzzle velocity. These things punch very hard. And uh, the 21 second base reload, which is a little bit longer than you would use. I think it's 22 second base reload, which is a little bit longer than you'd usually get. She gets a set of secondaries, uh, four triple turrets, and uh, these have quite an interesting arrangement uh, such that they are kind of wing turrets almost. So you see uh, two of them, two of them next to the rear turret and two of them next to the forward turrets. And a nice grouping of uh, dual purpose I think these are auto secondaries. Yeah, auto secondary slash AA guns around the central superstructure. Now, the actual Roma was mostly used for AA duty, but this is kind of one place where she falls a bit short, and that is the air defense. Uh, she does not have a great AA defense, and we'll have a we'll have a quick look across the tier eight battleships in a minute. In terms of the uh, elite bonus, you could buff the torpedo damage reduction even further, but honestly, if you're in a Roma, um, you're not going to get torpedoed all that much because this thing is pretty maneuverable and it is relatively easy to dodge torpedoes in the ship. So for me, the choice is definitely clear here to go with elite gun operator because you get a little bit of reload time and you get a bit better traverse speed, which nicely complements the, um, complements the maneuverability of the ship itself. The other very big difference is in here. This is one of the few ships in game that both gets the precise aiming and the rapid reload skill. So if you're aware of the captain skills, we get to the point, usually you get to you get an additional charge for either of them, but the skill actually covers both. So in this case, it's definitely the one to go with. So we have pretty decent armor. We have very meh AA, but we have a good set of secondaries and we have hard hitting, uh, hard hitting main guns with my favorite caliber of the 380s, plus a rapid reload and a precise aiming. And a good speed and maneuverability. So this is a very versatile ship. And again, if you've been watching the channel, you know that that's something that I like. So how does she compare to other ships at tier eight? So um, example, for example, the Richelieu, which is kind of usually the big question. They have a very similar amount of hit points. The Richelieu is a bit weaker in terms of armor. It's definitely a bit squishier on that regard, but she does get the completely forward uh, gun arrangement. In terms of maneuverability, they're very close to each other. In terms of main guns, Richelieu only gets eight, obviously, but they are all facing forward. Uh, they are very similar, the main guns. The Richelieu's guns also are 380s, and they are hitting pretty hard as well. Uh, they are, although even though they are 45 caliber length, so they're not quite having the same muzzle velocity as the Italian ones, but Roma is very punchy. They both get the 150 millimeter secondaries and um, they get a set of auto secondaries. Now, the, one, one big difference really in the Richelieu is the AA. So you can uh, AA tank in a Richelieu. Uh, and at tier eight, you might you might hit some pretty nasty <laughs> freedom being dropped on you from the top. And in Richelieu, you can definitely stand your ground. In Roma, not so much. So you do need to be aware that you're not getting yourself isolated and under concentrated air attack in that thing. Uh, they are both excellent ships. Don't get me wrong. And I think the question really is, um, what's your preference here? The, the, the Richelieu is a bit more unique in that she has that, well, two turrets forward uh, a kind of layout, whereas Roma has a standard battleship layout, but she is mighty. So, uh, commander skills, what have we put in the Roma? 
Uh, I actually didn't have an Italian commander for quite a while that I could put here uh, because the Italian commanders were fair and few in between and for some reason I never got one. But he, he's just being trained up now. So we've got the standard set here that you would expect. And the, very, the first interesting one comes in the fire supremacy, which is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, one precise aiming and one rapid reload. Uh, obviously, this means you also want the marksman and the master reloader skill and definitely the APCS once you get to it. It might not be a terrible idea to uh, get a close quarters combat expert as well in this ship because they do have a very decent set of secondaries plus auto secondaries. And um, if you do get into close range fights with things like destroyers, they can be quite useful. So, equipment-wise, where did we go with this? I went with Main Battery Mod 3 for precision. Because while the guns are pretty precise, uh, with both that and the precise aiming skill active, you can land a lot of lead on target and it hurts. So, Roma shells can and will uh, easily citadel uh, battleships through the deck on, on long range. Things like, uh, things like the Colorado which has a notoriously weak uh, weak top deck, and um, even even Iowa, she can hurt pretty badly. And at range, for the opening stages, when you are staying behind while everything gets spotted, this, uh, this is a good skill, this is a good thing to have. I still stick with my choice for the deck protection mod, because this is not an American battleship, and even there I'm doing this. <laughs> so yes, you could get another 1.5% damage off fires and floods, but uh, it's, it's really, in my opinion, it's really not worth it. I prefer going, not being set on fire in the first place as much as possible. And the third slot gets uh, goes firmly into steering. This is a quick, rapidly becoming my standard battleship setup in most of them. So let's have a quick look at the camouflage. I'm going to sail with the Halloween camo because I have it around, which gives us a bit more hit points and a bit better detection. But the historical camo, which I haven't purchased myself quite yet because this is tier 8 and it starts getting a little expensive and I don't play that chip that often. Gives us more hit points, more range, better dispersion and more torpedo damage reduction as if we needed that. Um, y yes, most definitely. So if you enjoy playing the ship and you have the ship and you're playing the ship frequently, very fr absolutely go for it. It's all very useful. Again, for me, the thing with the Roma is the versatility that she can play in in many different roles. She can play aggressively, she can play defensively, uh, she can play at range, she can play at cl a cl close range and get into, into brawls and dogfights. Uh, probably a little easier than the Richelieu. The Richelieu is more of a uh, really bow in tanky position at the beginning of the battle and uh, kind of then start once everything has cleared and you get a chance then you move forward and use the speed. Because the Richelieu, obviously, if you're not aware of it, does get uh, does get the engine accelerator, but you get the rapid firing guns with the with <laughs> the reload on the Roma. She can dish out an enormous amount of punishment. All right, um, let's go and actually have two battles because I've recorded a couple and I've just found two that I really liked. So let's go. In this first battle, we are playing on Deadlock in Domination, large map. And we are bottom tier against an Essex, so carrier is definitely a bit of an issue. We need to watch out. Iowa, North Carolina, another Roma on the enemy team, Neptune, Maya, and a Sien Yang. All right. So, um, ha she's very forgiving, I would say. Depending on if, if I would, if, I was, if you were to ask me which playstyle kind of works best with her, so you can go both aggressive with the ship and uh, try to dominate dominate a position and um, you, you can go defensive long range she's good at all of those things so in this case uh, there's a Benson and I'm going to follow the Benson into sea because there are two cruisers on the enemy ship so in case we encounter or even if we encounter battleships I'm going to get into the cap right next right behind that island and I'm keeping a little bit of an eye where the carrier is going because the, yeah, like I said the one thing that you don't have to worry too much about in the Richelieu is is uh, airdrops. I mean, of course, if you get under concentrated fire, you're always in trouble, but the Richelieu can shoot back, but the Roma not so much. So, but we've got a North Carolina with us, and there's the enemy Roma, so our very first uh, first opportunity, uh, we do the precise aiming, and look at the dispersion on these shells. 
That is just nice. And we get five uh, five shells in. And that's, an, uh, that's a nice salvo for 6,000 there to begin with. Like I said, it's not... Um, she, she is relatively sturdy. We get a se second salvo lobbed over the island. That's another uh, 6,000 in. And there comes a Maya around the corner. Now that means there are torpedoes in the water. So we're going to have to stop here. Maya has torpedoes, right? I think it does. And... Um, do get some shots out of that thing and that's yeah there they come the Maya torps so we do need to see that we can maybe dodge most of these I think I'm gonna take end up taking two or three maybe but that's all right but now the Maya is out of torpedoes <laughs> and uh, needs to turn around and in the meanwhile is uh, seven kilometers away from Aroma so that's gonna hurt and again these shells are um, I've, I have a pretty good dispersion that you most mostly most of the time you get more than half the shells of your salvos on target even at longer ranges so just backing off there in case there are any more torps in the water but uh, the maya is now under fire from two battleships so he's probably not having not going to have too much of a good time it's a bit slower than i thought he was going to be but uh the benson is is well obviously now starting to move out as well because we have the Maya, which is the major major threat against the Benson, uh, under fire. And we're holding two of the cap circles. So there are, there are two more battleships around. So I'm starting to move back towards B cap. Just killing the Maya off there. There's a Neptune. That's the other cruiser. So obviously the carrier has some issues with that Neptune. And uh, But I have a North Carolina. Now, I did say the Roma is a sturdy ship, and she is. But if you're getting under fire from an enemy Roma and a North Carolina at this range, you do need to watch out a little bit uh, what you're doing. But we are three minutes in and we've already done 30,000 points of damage. So, um, and th again, this is a pretty much untrained captain at this point. Uh, we do have, uh, we, we, we do a, a pretty damn good amount of damage. And they are broadsiding North Carolina. That was our first citadel against that thing. And let's see if we can cap we can get our hands onto the Neptune from here, because that's a that's a light cruiser. Is he in the turn? He might be in the turn. Oh, he gets extremely lucky that I'm just over penetrating him there. <laughs> so uh, very lucky Neptune that he didn't get outright deleted. But I've still got two broadside battleships. She again, she is pretty forgiving. Uh, even if you're broadsiding two battleships, pretty much, yes, you do get punished, especially if there's a Roma shooting back at you. But um, you, then you, then if you need to, you can go into a more defensive position and point the guns forward and uh, try to sink the Neptune <laughs> before he gets away. It seems like he got away, so that means we're gonna the, we're gonna open up at the North Carolina again and just lob some shells in his general direction. Uh, it ate some torpedoes as well. So we're up to 50,000 points of damage. I would say usually, even with a relatively untrained captain, you should be doing somewhere between 50 and 75,000 damage without even trying. So that's really what this ship is generally capable of. A uh, couple more shots out, see if we can kill the North Carolina. Uh, there come some more Roma shells in, we do need to dodge those. Okay, North Carolina is dead, so now it's time for the enemy Roma. Um, I'm on 4,000 health, so I do need to play this at range now, because I have been uh, tank taking quite a bit of damage while tanking, and that Neptune's still alive. <laughs> but uh, I've got shells out at the, en at the enemy Roma. Let's see if we can do something about the Neptune. No, he's behind the island. So uh, again, rapid reload is still active, so let's get another shot out while we get the heal up, and hopefully the enemy Roma is uh, running into some torpedoes, but it looks like you see that, that that's the maneuverability of the Roma. <laughs> uh, that was an easy dodge. And uh, the carrier is trying to torp the Benson. I still don't have shots at the Neptune. So I'm just going to get some more shots off at, uh, at the enemy Roma. I'm trying to help the Benson here, but um, uh, so that's pretty good. And I think somebody else took out the Neptune at this point. So enemy team's down to three ships. And while they are holding two of the three capture circles, we are ahead in points. So even with 10,000 health, health, I can now go and rush, because the Roma's got someone else to shoot at. This is something I would be doing in a Richelieu as well. Um, although, like when relocating, I wouldn't be as, as careless with showing broadside in a Richelieu as I am in a Roma, because again, the Roma is uh, somewhat sturdier than, um, than the Richelieu. 
All right, one more salvo and then that guy's dead. Oh, now the Iowa takes him. Okay, so now it's just a matter of uh, shooting at the Essex. Now, again, rushing a carrier with 10,000 health remaining is uh, probably not... Um, wouldn't is not something I would do in Roma if the game was in any way open. All right, so if there was any chance that the enemy team was going to win this... Uh, not quite. It's reversing, I think. Uh, so... I uh, I would I would do that again in a Richelieu easily because of the AA uh, we got a good, another Citadel and that's the high caliber and I haven't even really tried hard this game I've just this was really just a casual okay let's sail around a bit and shoot at people of opportunity sort of thing uh, and uh, Roma is just as power that powerful that she can do this kind of thing now if we get the we get the carrier sighted up oh, there he is okay can we get one more salvo in let's see. Maybe we can get a kill if we're lucky. Ah, uh, no, we were unlucky with the dispersion and we only get semi pens. Yep, well, <laughs> someone else can take him out. There he goes, okay. Uh, but we've done almost 90,000 damage in an extremely casual game of uh, playing Roma. So, what if you do need to, you know, hold, hold, a, hold a position a bit more, tank a bit more, take point and get up in the front lines? Well, first of all, let's uh, let's quickly review how how the teams were doing. And uh, yeah, we got one kill, one cap, and we came out on top of the whole thing. So yeah, absolutely something you can do. And you see, even the enemy Roma uh, did sixty four thousand points of damage. So you this is you're almost guaranteed to do somewhere between fifty and seventy five eighty thousand points of damage in this ship. Well, let's get into the second game. In this game, we are on Aurora. And keep an eye on the Cleveland. Because while uh, while this is, well, obviously about, about what I'm doing in the Roma, but keep an eye on what the Cleveland's doing. Because uh, that, is, that is some excellent Cleveland gameplay that we're going to get on our side. Enemy team, Lexington, NC, Colorado, Kutuzov, Orleans, Benson and Aka. So, how do you deal with destroyers in this ship? Well, you dodge torpedoes. Simple as that. Because you have you have an ex you're you're very maneuverable. You've got a uh, I think it was about a 10 second uh, rudder shift turn time. So have your torpedo sensors up and then uh, and then be uh, you know be be on guard. Now against the carrier, I would usually not push too much in the Roma. Again in the Richelieu, I could position myself against the island there in front and just take out planes left and right and center. So I'm checking what the Cleveland's doing because the Cleveland's obviously, if the Cleveland comes with me, I have both uh, AA support which I desperately need, and um, the, the destroyer deterrent which I don't so desperately need, but it's always good to have in case they know what they're doing. But again here, Richelieu is more vulnerable to destroyers. The Roma has an extremely good torpedo damage reduction due to that uh, aforementioned to, uh, kind of unique torpedo defense system. Okay, New Orleans uh, spotted, so there's our first target. I'm gonna try and get the get all three turrets on point. Uh, but I do that does mean we're gonna be running into the island. But uh, well, we do get again five shells on target, even at that range because these guns are very precise. There's Benson. Okay, so there are torpedoes in the water, which means I'm going to have to slow down here. And let's see if I can get some more shots out at New Orleans. But New Orleans knows what they're doing, so they're going bow in. But look at that dispersion. Uh, if I was if I was aiming a little bit further back, I would have uh, I would have hit him with a couple more shells. Okay, and I, might, I might be taking two torps, but uh, again, 30% damage reduction. They're not doing a huge amount. And I can just go bow in here. Okay, there's a Kutuzov. No, sorry, that's a North Carolina. Kutuzov is on the, on the other side. So I'm going to sh uh, shot out. Okay, that's a Citadel on the North Carolina. Easy. And um, shots out at the Kutuzov because that's a AG spammer. Oh, they just fell short. Okay. And I'm just backing out here. So we're just tanking this position and I'm making full use of the fact that I've got a Cleveland right next to me. Which means I can focus on cruisers and battleships and the Cleveland can focus on planes and destroyers. If these had this should have been a citadel if I had aimed a little bit more in the center. Okay, Sims is coming around. Nice. And I'm still tanking shots from the North Carolina. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay, Kutuzov again. Uh, tempting target over there. 
because he's probably not aware that he's giving me broadside and I'm shooting at him. Let's see if we can do something about that thing. Okay. A ah, couple more hits in. At maximum range, you know, obviously you don't expect to get everything on target, especially if the precise aiming is is on cooldown. But um, yeah, oh no, he's noticed me and he's trying to set me on fire. You get a bit better uh, fire and flooding resistance. If you're smoking, um, if you're smoking up, tip, right? If you're smoking up in a ship, don't stop first and then smoke, because that means I just have to literally aim where, this, where, you, where I last seen you, right in the center of your smoke. Uh, smoke first and then slow down because then you, you get a bigger smoke screen and it's not immediately obvious where you are. All right, at this point, uh, no one's killed anything. So <laughs> I'm still tanking this position here together with Cleveland, dodging some Colorado shells and um, generally just using my health here. North Carolina on the other side and there's Kutuzov again. So let's see if I can do something about him this time around, but the destroyers are nowhere near. There's one coming going after the carrier. Uh, I, but honestly, in the heat of the battle, I haven't even noticed that. And again, watch what uh, watch what our Cleveland is doing. Cleveland and Amalfi are both completely deterring any destroyers coming in here. And there's three of us uh, getting shot at by one, two, three, four enemy ships. Five maybe if you include the Benson. Okay, that's the Colorado again. Uh, Cleveland takes the Benson under fire instead of trying to set the Colorado on fire, which is which is uh, exactly the right thing. Now Benson smokes up. Obviously, Benson is going to have torpedoes away. So at this point, um, I'm pushing a little bit forward and just get some more shots out at the Colorado and then just uh, put the ship in reverse and turn in. Uh, the dead giveaway is that Benson's firing his guns at me. So he's trying to set me on fire, probably, uh, getting forcing a Damacon. And there come some Benson torpedoes, but uh, I should be dodging most of these. Yeah, I'll just take one. And again, your torpedo protection here is uh, means that you're not taking a huge amount of damage on these. So let's just finish off the Colorado over there. And uh, what, we've got plenty of things to shoot at. At this point, we're being capped because the carrier has left and the Cleveland is, um, is reacting. Because first of all, there's an Amalfi here next to me. The enemy carrier uh, isn't, doesn't seem to be a huge threat at this point. So Amalfi can do destroyer deterrence if necessary and we've killed the Benson. So Cleveland is heading back. Uh, and, uh, and is dealing with the destroyer in our cap, which is excellent. This is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And uh, Amalfi goes, uh, goes forward and smokes, which doesn't help me in any way, but I can uh, get some shots off. At, we've got a lot of low health targets there to be, uh, to be wearing down. Unfortunately, Kutuzov and uh, the, the other cruiser came, in, came into, uh, into view just by the time I had fired, but I've, I'm still on rapid reload and um, I'm getting some shots off at the Kutuzov, just kind of dodging some torpedo planes if necessary. And he's still alive. I was having no luck with this thing, right? When I'm in a Kutuzov, I immediately get deleted <laughs> when I'm in a scenario like this. But the enemy's uh, ships are running out, all running low on health. I'm still trying to kill the Kutuzov over there. Oh, no, I think he's turning. But uh, the North Carolina is in secondary range, so don't forget about these. Oh, there we go, finally. He is still alive. That thing's unkillable. And there's the high caliber, 80,000 points, and we're still on 20,000 points of damage, uh, of, of health. So um, I'm gonna try and kill both the Kujuzov and the Lexington, <laughs> see if I can probably uh, two shots out on the Lexi and see if I can get one shot at the Kujuzov, but I think the lock-on was playing, uh, was, yeah. Uh, you see that's the, the range finder from the lock-on uh, was, uh, was aiming at the Lexington. But don't worry, uh, I'll get to you in a second, good sir. There's one destroyer left, I don't know where he is, but, uh, at this point, I'll just have to kill the Kutuzov, and I think that should do the trick. All right, then. Uh, there we go. Finally, that thing's dead, and I don't care about that fire anymore, just in case the destroyer is still uh, coming around. So, again, huge thanks to the Cleveland. Excellent Cleveland gameplay. Uh, he's using me to, to tank the damage from the battleships. Uh, he's doing, uh, doing anti-air duty. He's doing destroyer screening, uh, which allows me to do exactly what I'm doing. So even though you end up um, like in a, in a battleship like this, doing the uh, yeah, we're not going to cap out anymore. Doing the big damage numbers, you are um, this this all this very much only happens when you are enabled to do so, right? If I didn't have the Cleveland, I couldn't have had poked out there because the carrier could have killed me, the destroyers could have rushed me, you know. 
uh, all these kind of things. So even though you do get the battle star for the big damage numbers, all this wouldn't have been possible without uh, teammates who are playing their roles excellently. So that was great. But yeah, um, this is literally the amount of damage you can do with the Roma. And I haven't even fully set this thing up yet because I don't have a 10 point captain in there. I don't have the historical camo in there. Uh, all these sort of things. So um, that's just, uh, it, it is just that powerful that ship right then uh, yeah I think in summary it is an excellent ship if you had asked me if I want this or the Richelieu uh, it, it's really a tie uh, they both have they're both very strong ships I probably personally like the Richelieu a little bit better because the Roma feels a bit overpowered <laughs> honestly because it's just too easy uh, to do these massive amounts of damage in in, in Roma. And um, Richelieu is a bit more unique with the two turrets forward, and but they're still both extremely strong uh, tier 8 premiums. So whatever you get, you're gonna have you're gonna have some fun in these things. How do you kill a Roma? Um, planes is a good way to kill a Roma. Uh, torpedoes is actually surprisingly difficult. Um, but yeah, concentrated fire and planes is a good way to kill Romas. Anyway, uh, just like in just like in, uh, in reality. <laughs> that's how she got sunk. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you, everybody. And uh, finally, we got to it. I'll see you all next time. Bye.